Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award. Last night, covert hate, the lowest common denominator. I didn't watch it, no. I've never watched the Emmys, no. But people on, in the business said, have you seen it? Have you heard it? Have you seen what that low-grade phony with eyeglasses did? I said, no. I know this. The ratings are showing people are tuning out of this low-grade hatred of the Emmys because they're sick of watching low-IQ, talentless TV puppets salute each other. Last night, every hater in Hollywood took to the stage and in what was supposed to be an award show, turned into nothing but three hours of bashing Americans who voted for Donald Trump. The Emmy showed the underbelly of Hollywood for what it really is, drugs, sex, and bad rock and roll. Covert people who hate you and hate me. The people who go to their movies were probably not even watching the Emmys. They think you're stupid, and they showed you that last night. Nothing but bashing of the president, and none of it real. For example, let me prove it in one sentence. One stupid actress after another. One arty actress after another. You know the kind of kids who went to the high school of performing arts because they couldn't study? You know the kind of kids who had ADD and couldn't focus on real subjects? They went to art and science, uh, arts and uh, entertainment. One after the other, they said we're living in fascism. Now, let me tell you something, morons. Lily Tomlin, Alec Baldwin, Stephen, Jane Fonda, Reese Witherspoon, Julia Lewis, Dreyfus. What do you need three names for, by the way? Danny Glover, John Lithgow. Listen, morons, if you were living in fa fascism, you wouldn't be there on that stage. You'd be behind bars. Just by the evidence of the reality, you'd be able to call the president a fascist. It shows your drug-addicted adults to most of Americans who tuned out. You see, the Emmys are nothing but a trade show. Like garbage men who give each other awards. Remember in the, in the show The Sopranos? There was the Carding Association Awards for those in the garbage business. Like most creative dumpster, most beautiful garbage truck. That's what you saw last night. It's made to seem important, but it's not. Did you watch the show? Do you ever watch the show? Who watches the show? I looked into the demographics. The demographics are women 49 and up, meaning women who have nothing to do meaning women who sit at home and eat chocolate and take a diabetes pill. The Emmys is designed to appeal to only the lowest common denominator. It's for the people who? Is it for the people who actually spend money on anything? Or those who read the magazines on the checkout stand? These are the people who will do whatever these brainless, brainless, talentless, low-grade failure actors and actresses tell them to do because they're on TV. You tell them the president is Hitler, and the idiots believe it. You tell them the president is trying to hurt them, both mentally and physically, and the idiots believe it. This show was bad for the country. It's bad for everyone in it. The lemmings are the reason the demon cats have any power whatsoever. But it wasn't always this way. Hollywood, you see, was once very, very pro-American. If you recall your history books during World War II, they stood up for America. They backed the war effort. They promoted rubber drives, and I'm not talking about birth control. Steel drives, war bonds, anything to help our boys who are dying over there in Europe and in the Pacific. Some great actors like Jimmy Stewart and others actually served in the military. And then when they came out, they made sure their movies reflected their love of America. Why don't you see that today? Why do you see a low-grade cockamamie idiot like Stephen Covert or the failed actor Alec Baldwin making idiots of themselves? They're nothing more than low creatures who care only of themselves and hamming it up in front of a camera. And what they see as virtue is tearing down everything that we believe in, everything that built America in the first place, even those who built the cameras, even those who built the networks, even those who built television itself. Yeah, that's what they're tearing back down. Of course, they're tearing down God and family as well. They have to tear that down because it's the only way they can garner any power amongst the illiterates who watch them. Well, the good news is their ratings have been collapsing over the years. People are tuning out of this low-grade hatred of the Emmys 
because they got sick of watching low IQ, talentless, drug addicted puppets salute each other. Now let's have some journey on the Savage Nation, and I'll come back with some great stories. No break, just music. My last syndication company, and I had nowhere to go. Nowhere to go. I was flying on a wing and a prayer. I had no radar. I had no map. I had no ge geographical points. I left that syndicator without any business opportunities ahead of me, but I had one thing, and that's the same thing I have every day on this show, and I had faith in God. I knew. I knew something would come along, and as God is my witness, within two weeks, I was signing a deal with Cumulus Media with John and Lou Dickey, and that's how I started the new career. However, I got to tell you this, although I knew I would go into drive time, which I did where I am now on the East Coast, by the way, the most coveted spot in radio, I had to do one hour of a night show. It was the hardest night of my life. Believe me, doing a show at night when you've been doing a show by day is a very, very difficult thing, but I... I remember listening to music by Journey, and it was not this song. Uh, Jim or Robert, you remember the song I liked the most? It was something about San Francisco. And for that reason, I fell in love with Journey, a group I had vaguely paid any attention to. Anyway, back to the Savage Nation. If you can find that Journey song, we'll talk about the Emmys. Despite the criminals who've taken over the city. Oh, nice tuxedos they wore at the opera opening. It's like out of the Marx Brothers. You seen the dresses? You ever seen the dresses they wear at the opera opening here in San Francisco? How out of town. Normally I push it on michaelsavage.com, but they were, the dresses were so bad this year, they didn't even appear in the San Francisco newspaper. This reminds me of like being out west. You know, they're still out west out here, out west with bad dresses they give back. You know the kind of women who put the tags on the inside of the designer dresses? And then they bring them back on Monday morning, stained underneath the arm. That's San Francisco society. In 49, the miners came. In 51, the you-know-who. And in 53, there came the golden sons of the Golden West, or the whatever. We'll talk about uh, Trump and the United Nations. We'll talk about Latin Heritage Month. A friend of mine uh, who uh, goes to a community college, Billy E., found something you're not going to believe. They're stealing all the resources for the indigenous, meaning American students, and giving them to illegal aliens with one program after another. Can you believe that? Of course you should believe it. Now you know the rest of the story. This is the Savage Nation. The phone number I invite you to call is 855-400-7282. I guess the best place to go right now on the program is a montage of the losers of America, Alec Baldwin, failed actor, Stephen Colbert, script reader, Lily Tomlin, don't know who she is, Jane Fonda, you know her, Hanoi Jane, hated America then, still hates America now. She'll hate America when she crosses to the other side. Reese Witherspoon, who used to have a career. Julia Lewis Dreyfus, sorry, I last saw her in a dirty sitcom. Danny Glover, do I have to even mention more than that? It's become a not a name, but a verb. When you say you're doing a Danny Glover, it means something that I can't say on a family show. Listen to all of them. Trying to be funny by bashing the president last night at the so-called... It's a dollars for bourbon garbage! Oppressed minorities everywhere! How much of this crap can anyone take? Well, I thank all of you for tuning out this garbage. And maybe Katzenberg, Hatzenberg, Matzenberg, Ratzenberg, and the others who run this filth into the minds of America and the world will finally get the message when it hits them in their Swiss banks. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Tomato plants are still producing very late in the year. It's not because of global warming. It's been doing it every year like this in the Bay Area till around October. I plant them in March, and I harvest my tomatoes till October. My lemons, I have a boom crop of my lemons. My fruit trees are starting to drop their leaves. My California buckeyes are starting to shed their leaves. Yeah, it's autumn in the air. There's no question about it. I see Halloween around the corner. Stupid holiday for children, I get it. I'm not supposed to bash it because most of you 
have given up on religion and God, and your new religion is uh, television and Halloween. And then I got my God book coming out November 14th, God, Faith, and Reason, which is the biggest gamble I've ever taken in my publishing career. The publisher did not want this book. I'll be very honest with you. Uh, I said, if you want me to do Trump's war last year, you've got to take God, Faith, and Reason. Well, now they're into it. I mean, they're printing about 100000 to start with. It'll be in the front of every bookstore in the country. But do you actually think that in the world in which we live, people are going to go buy a secular book about God, faith, and reason? I don't really know. I predict either this will be the biggest thing I've ever written, my legacy, or it'll bomb. Either way, it's done. And I worked on it again all weekend. It was in galley proof. Those of you who are writers know what that means. And yet the lawyers at the publishing company found a few objectionable passages about stories I told, and I had to take them out. I fought with them, got angry in the morning, and yielded by night. In other words, reason kicked in, and I was no longer a vengeful author. <laughs> if you know what I'm talking about. I said that God is a vengeful God. I'm a vengeful author. My immediate reaction is the right one. As I remember on intelligence tests, they always said, uh, when you're taking a big test, an IQ test, always go with your first answer. Your first instinct is usually right. Well, otherwise you're going to get hung up on a single question. The search to find God is the finding itself. It's a very interesting statement. I don't mean to talk about it right now, and I won't. Let's go back to the uh, headlines on michaelsavage.com. Covert hate the lowest common denominator top right. Furious worshipers turn on police when they enter their mosque without taking off their shoes. And that's because it's a religion of peace. That's because it's a religion that assimilates very well. That's because it's a religion of tolerance. That's because it's a religion of love. And the more I thought about it, the more I thought about the suicide of the West. The more I see of this wonderful religion of peace, the more I realize we are a suicidal nation. It's far worse in England. It's far worse in France, Belgium, Germany than it is here. And were it not for Donald Trump, we'd be England today, and there'd be no England anymore. So thank God we have Donald Trump in the White House who understands exactly what it is, which is an ex existential threat to your way of life and your existence, especially if you're an atheist who likes the Emmys. You are the biggest target of these wonderful practitioners of the religion of peace that you so badly want to love so much. Trump was at the UN today. We'll play that. Brown University, once great Ivy League school, descended into the toilet a long time ago, uh, and it is now offering, if you can believe this, segregated student dinners for black students and then another one for Muslim women only. Isn't it wonderful to see how progressive progressives really aren't? Next story, michaelsavage.com linked up. Obama cashes in. That's right, man of the people. Oh, yeah, minority president. He didn't like the millionaires and billionaires much. Till he got out of office when he traveled with them and he just made $1.2 million for only three Wall Street speeches. And you progressives are so stupid, you'll believe anything he sold you. Swedish state media boss caught trying to buy virginity of underage girl. What happened to Sweden? St. Louis, 80 arrests and third night of protests. New segregation signs pop up in leftist establishments. Anyone they don't like, they call a hater. And you're not welcome. Yeah. Mm. Well, we can also talk about the hermit kingdom of North Korea, where one family robs everything from everybody, and Alec Baldwin and Jesse Jackson and Madeleine Albright seem to love him. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. You know, the youth, I found another copy, and i played it ever since. Welcome to the, <laughs> to the program. The Empty Nesters. The Empty Nesters. I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk about two other things in the middle of everything. Uh, two TV shows since last night with the Emmys, and it was garbage. Anti-Trump. Low life. I don't know who watches it. Women 49 plus who don't work for a living. So there are shows I watch on TV. One of them is Ray Donovan, which has now become the most depressing TV show in American history. I'll tell you why. And a new one that started on HBO last week called The Deuce, which is nothing but softcore pornography, which I can't watch anymore. It's horrible. 
they both devolved. In other words, when we all watched The Sopranos on HBO many years ago, that was TV at its highest. It was the best series ever done in history. I rewatch them all the time when I'm bored of everything else, and I see the, the artistic perfection of every single Sopranos episode. They're flawless from the beginning to the end, whether it be directing, acting, uh, the music, whatever, perfect. So I turn on Ray Donovan, and I've been watching it for a few years. I was off and on with it. I happen to think that, uh, you know, John Voight is the best actor in it. Every time he appears on the screen, he takes over the entire show. I watch it just for him, to see him. Uh, I'm not a fan of Lee Schreiber. He seems too weak for the role. He still does. And I'm not knocking the guy. He's sort of growing into the role, and I'm sort of getting used to him. He just doesn't look like a tough guy fixer that they try to make him out to be, and I don't buy it. But what's wrong with Ray Donovan now is they've done something that is astonishing. They gave his wife cancer, terminal cancer, and she's dying of it. And at the end of this year two or whatever, she was dying of it. Now they open up year three, I think, and they show her without hair, with a kerchief in bed, and every other scene is a flashback to the dying wife. It's enough. Why can't they just kill that character off and be done with it? Why are they dragging out this whole cancer thing? It is so bad that I can't watch Ray Donovan anymore. I may or I may not. But I got to tell you, it's the most depressing TV show in modern American history. Re real mistake. And again, the deuce, I don't know, it's supposed to be at 42nd Street. I tuned it in because I'm a kid from New York originally. I remember 42nd Street when it was a toilet. And when I was a kid, we used to go down there because it was so seedy. We loved it. Kids love seedy. Kid kids love seedy neighborhoods. If they come from lily white, uh, carpeted, secure neighborhoods, they love to go into seedy. And we used to go to CD, come out of the subway. It was like walking into another universe. And it was dirty and filthy and the hookers and the pimps and the this and the that. And then you go back to your safe little world. Well, okay, big deal. So they did a vicarious thrill about 42nd Street called The Deuce. And nothing but softcore porno. There's no story to it. All it is is about black pimps and, and, and hookers and some guy who works in a bar who's an actor, Russell Brand, who they try to make a split screen with another, he's supposed to have a twin brother. It doesn't work. The twin brother thing is an absolute stupid trick that didn't work. There was a far better British version of twin brother gangsters, one totally insane and one partly insane, that was done years ago by a far better actor than Russell Brand. And anyone who could tell me who I'm talking about, because for the moment uh, the actor is an American actor, he, he escapes me, I'll give you a free copy of God, Faith, and Reason. But nevertheless, I do not recommend Ray Donovan unless you are total depressive and want to go psychotic. And I don't recommend The Deuce unless you can't get real pornography and uh, are only allowed to watch softcore, the softcore version. Okay, that went over as well as the Emmys did last night. But uh, I, I don't write my stuff. I just talk as though I'm speaking with you in a bar and you're my customers. Here's some Savage Nation weekend headlines. Um, the four American tourists attacked with acid in France are Boston College students. Four young girls walking around at the St. Charles train, train station in Marseille, France. And a woman unidentified runs up to them and throws acid in their face. They will not identify the woman, but they're quick to tell us that she's 41 years old, she has mental Ill, uh, problems, and it's not terrorism related. I wonder why they won't tell us her name or give us her picture. In either case, these four girls will be traumatized and or scarred for life. And let me warn you about something else. There is a war against the West going on in Europe now. Be aware of the fact that there are acid attacks, etc., in addition to the bombings, which we know about from our good friends who practice the religion of peace. There are over 200 re reported acid attacks in London alone, covered up by the mayor of London. This surely is the death of the West. This is the Savage Nation. If you get a comment on any of these depressing stories, don't bother, because you can't do a better job than I just did. And let us see what else is in here. Uh, oh, oh, this you have to see. Oh, no, I'm not ready for it. The propaganda is so heavy, I can't even do it. I'm not ready to jump. I'm, I'm going to give you a treat today. 
Do I have the time right now? It's 12.40. I have a good five-minute segment, and I need 30 to 60 seconds for this. <sighs> Let's see how I begin. My book ended, God, Faith, and Reason, at a funeral of a friend's father who has been fictionalized. And the last lines of the book were these. I remember them very well. As the father is being lowered into the grave, and the Mexican grave diggers are moved by the Jewish prayers at the grave site, uh, my friend's friend, an Israeli intelligence agent, as I was told, comes over and says this at the grave site. Well, well, none of us know where we're going to die, as he said with the 70s rockers cackle. That was the la those were the last lines of God, faith, and reason. Three people said, you can't end the book that way. It's not uplifting enough. You've got to give people something to have faith in. They'll think you're faithless. Are they to assume that you don't believe in God by saying a thing like that? Well, I, we went back and forth, and I argued with them, and I said, the statement itself that we don't know where we're going to die actually is a worship in itself. What we're saying is God knows where we're going to die. We don't. But they didn't get it. Nobody got it. So what we did was is we took lines that are all my own. Every last word in this book were from my writings over the last 40 years. And we took them from the uh, other sections. And here's how the book ends. Are you ready? It's only three paragraphs, God, faith, and reason. Here's what I wrote. God is not linear. God is infinite. Envision the Milky Way. All the stars and all the universes, all the pebbles, every grain of sand, all the crawling insects, God created all things big and small. How we approach the Creator defines us. Those who accept Jesus as the Son of God call themselves Christians. Those who bow to Allah are called Muslims. Jews worship the single entity they call God. What of Hindus? What of Hindus who worship not God but fantastic entities? And Buddhists who read their poetry of life and bow down to an idol? What do we say of the many who worship the Great Spirit? How do we define those who don't believe in an all-powerful God, but may spend their conscious minutes pondering the stars and planets, the movements of celestial bodies, the quarks and sparks of dying stars millions of light years away, or those who argue over causality, the physicists and scientists who say there is no God except for rational thought and electrical impulses that die when our bodies no longer emit signs of life? Are they not seeking the answer to this ancient riddle? As Joel's friend said at the funeral, we never know where we're going to die, and we certainly don't know what comes next. In the meantime, we can look for the presence of God, even here, amidst all the ills of the world. In the end, the search to find God is the finding itself. That's the new ending of uh, my book. You like that ending better than... We never know where we're going to die, he said with a rocker's cackle, a 70s rocker's cackle. I like the 70s rocker's cackle because it's sort of a more artistic ending for a movie. But for my audience and for this book of God, Faith, and Reason, this is actually probably a more hopeful ending, right? Well, my friends, if you care to comment on any of this stuff, anything, and I've talked about an awful lot of things, probably more so than you can imagine, if you were to analyze what topics I have mentioned thus far in the first three segments of this show, and mathematically calculate them, there will be more topics than you'll hear on all of Talk Radio for the rest of the week. 855-407-282. Let's take a couple of callers. KSFO, Petri Line 1, go ahead, please. Hey, Michael, I want to start off by saying congratulations. I'm uh, kind of excited that you're so enthusiastic and thrilled about your latest book. And that's what prompted me to call was the idea of, God, right? God, faith, and uh, humanity, but then there's also the devil, and the devil being Satan, Lucifer, Beelzebub, or whatever the name is given for evil, right? And the, the, the politics of, of God and Satan, you know? He got cast down, right, from heaven, and uh, banished from the throne of God, yet you know, you've played on your show several times, Sympathy for the Devil, and so the question in my mind comes up many times. It's like, yeah, what about Satan? You know, did he get a raw deal? Did he get a bum deal? Sa no, no, Satan is your best friend. Satan is the dark side of the moon. Without Satan, there would be no... Without dark, there'd be no light. 
Without Satan, there'd be no 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 angels. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? I'm going to explain it now, Petri. I'm going to give it to you on the air, to you and all the other listeners, because it's one of the most important questions we can ask. You ask, why is there a devil? Why is there Satan? Well, let me become a philosopher for you for a moment, because that's probably what I am anyway, uh, in many ways, disguised as a talk show host, disguised as a comedian, wrapped within an ethnobotanist, within a man who can cook leftovers like no one else on earth. So why does the devil live? A, a, a mystical Jewish rabbi uh, said to me many, many, many decades ago when I asked the very same question, which is why am I plagued with desires? Why am I plagued with impulses I don't want? Why is God tormenting me with these things? Why, I said to the mystic, and I'll give you the answer when I return right here on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. By the way, listen to me. Did you know that you can find out if your body is making enough nitric oxide simply by testing your own saliva? I've been raving about Super Beets because it's a great circulation superfood, and it really works. You get more energy, more stamina in as little as 20 minutes. Now, the people at Super Beets send me saliva indicator strips, and by using your own saliva, you can see the changes in your nitric oxide level from using Super Beets. It's that simple. Check it out. I love that Super Beats puts their money where their mouth is. For a limited time with your first order, Super Beats will send you an entire month's supply of saliva indicator strips, a $25 value for free. And with your order, you also get a free book plus your first can of Super Beats absolutely free. That is another $50, no, $60 value for free. So try it for yourself. Call 1-800-481-0504. You're going to get a month's supply of indicator strips free to track those changes at a cellular level. You'll get more energy, more stamina while supporting healthy circulation. So call 800-481-0504 or go to savagelovesbeats.com, 800-481-0504 or savagelovesbeats.com. I don't know that I can jump back to why the devil exists right now. I'll do it in the next hour. It's very hard to move your mind around from left to right, from top to bottom, uh, you know, it makes sense. I'm not going to do it now. I'll do it later. What I'm going to do now is take some calls on the sh on the show. WABC, Eddie, welcome to the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Good afternoon, Michael. Well, come on, let's go, Eddie. Quick, 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 Eddie, 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 Eddie. I thought the I thought the Emmy Awards were like evil personified. Not only did people like Alan Baldwin tear the president apart, but those flaky, wicky women. When you think of the dignity that they had years ago on the Academy Award and Emmy shows, and all of a sudden you see those flaky women, each one trying to outflake the other one. It's right, and, and they made no sense, but this is a product of a number of things. Inherently bad DNA, a very, very poor, a very, very poor neurological matrix from childhood from using too many drugs or the parents were on drugs, uh, going to high schools or performing arts, never going to a anywhere with this formal education, where they even know what the word fascism means. Now combine that with an industry that is cl more closed than the Amish community. They don't speak to anyone else but each other. So they feed each other's stupid views of the world, and then they think the world is going to buy it, Eddie. Yeah. Thank you for the call. I almost lost my breath thinking about them. Uh, what now? What do I want to talk about? Trump at the U.N. Can he make America great again? All right, he was at the U.N. Let's hear the president at the U.N. saying the right things in clip two. Yet in recent years, the United Nations has not reached its full potential because of bureaucracy and mismanagement. Right. While the United Nations on a regular budget has increased Good. by 140 percent and its staff has more than doubled since 2000, we are not seeing the results in line with this investment. That's but right. I know that under the Secretary General, 
that's changing, and it's changing fast, and we've seen it. That's why we commend the Secretary General and his call for the United Nations to focus more on people and less on bureaucracy. That's a very brave speech to the world uh, diplomats at the U.N., and it's long overdue. Because we all know that it's people who go there to feather their own nests. They do very little good on the planet uh, these days. Some good, but not really that much good. When has the U.N. last done anything of value? I, I can't even remember. Why are they not controlling North Korea? Why are they not stopping the Islamic terrorist attacks on the West? Why don't they even mention Islamic terror attacks in their relationship to the over-interpretation or the literal interpretation of the Holy Book? Why is that not a topic that is important to the U.N.? The answer is because it's a useless organization. I have said for years, get the U.S. out of the U.N., close the building down, and convert it into a homeless shelter, and let the diplomats go to Brussels where they'll be more comfortable. I'm Michael Savage. Be here or be nowhere. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, the Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael S- all right, welcome back to the Savage Nation. Uh, if you missed the first hour and you're late for class, uh, read the Savage Notes on michaelsavage.com, and everything we talked about today will be on the midterms. Phone number here is 855-400-7282, 855-400-SAVAGE. Before the end of the hour, I was talking about why, the, uh, why Satan exists. I know, oh, there he goes with religion again. I'm turning the show off. Look, I can't help it if you'll turn the show off. I'm not going to just sit here and talk about politics all day long. By the way, there's a bigger issue going on here. I'm taking a big... I have an intuitive feeling that owing to the hatred in the political world, as evidenced last night by the drug addicts who performed uh, in the most uh, obscene manner, the people are turning off entertainment. They're turning off politics. I think they're even turning off sports because of the hatred on the field. Where does that leave them? What does it leave them? I don't have an answer. Everyone has their own answer. I think that a lot of people are turning back toward family, faith, and God. Now, I conceived of this book many years ago, you know, God, faith, and, and reason. But it happens to be coming out November 14th, and I'm going to make a prediction that you're going to hear a lot more about it than you would imagine. I think it's going to catch a spiritual or faith wave in this country that is emerging. So I read for you in the last hour my last words, and it was supposed to end at a funeral, at a graveyard rather, of a friend's father that I went to in the 1980s, where they're lowering him in the ground. No one was there but me and the friend and, you know, my wife. And uh, there was no one really there. The guy was a Holocaust survivor who was buried, a very, very angry man. His fingers had been cut off in a saw by the Nazis. I love these schmucks at the Emmys last night. They don't even know what Nazism is, these fools. It's sad, it's sad to, to appropriate a term like Nazi and so abuse it by calling Trump a Nazi is sickening. But I expect that from uh, the Colberts and the other lightweights in the, in, the, in, the, in the world of entertainment. So this guy was being buried, lowered in the ground. They were Mexican grave diggers, and there were some Orthodox Jewish guys praying, and their chants were so, I don't have the words for it, cut through the fog, that the Mexicans were moved by it because... All cultures respect funerals, with rare exception. I don't have to now give a, a, an offhanded jape. So he's being lowered in the ground, and the last words of the book were supposed to be, as his friend from Israeli intelligence said to me, as he was lowered in the ground, we never know where we're going to die, as he said with a 70s rocker's cackle. That was supposed to be the end of the book. So publisher, this one, that one, said it's too negative you got to give people hope. 
And I argue, no, 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 no. I said, this is hopeful. This shows you that we're in God's hands. We don't know where we're going to die. That's the greatest worship you can say in a book. That's like saying it's not in your hand. Like say, when you commit suicide, I'll prove that I'm stronger than God. No, you're not. It's God's hand making you commit suicide. See, you don't know who you're dealing with here. I have the answer for everything. They used to say when I was getting my doctorate, he had a mind like a steel trap about my professor. Well, I don't like the idea of a mind like a steel trap. I like the idea of a mind like a fluid sphere rather than a steel trap. But somehow in the discussion in the last hour, you want me to talk about Trump and the Emmys? I'm not going to do it for right now. First of all, I have a migraine. That's number one. Number two, my head is going here, so I can't go where my head's not going. So I said in the last hour that people want to know why why there's Satan, why there's the devil, etc. And I said to you, I spoke about this with a mystical Jewish, a Jewish mystic 40 years ago. I asked him the same questions. Why do I have these impulses? Why do I have these desires? Why am I driven in this way or that way? And he said to me, they call it, the Jewish people call that the Yetzahara, meaning the evil impulse. And we, we all have the evil impulse. And he tried to tell me about former criminals who he knew. I'm talking gangsters. I'm talking Jewish gangsters. I'm not talking about little con men. Really bad people who discovered God and discovered how to channel the Yetzahara and became great men for the good of mankind. And he said to me, the greater the Yetzahara, meaning the greater the evil spirit in man, the more capacity he has for doing good. That was one of the, that was E equals MC squared for me. That was Einstein's theory of relativity for me. That gave me an understanding that the stronger your impulses are to do bad, the greater you have the capacity to do good. It means you have tremendous energy and tremendous passion that if harnessed correctly can do great good on the earth. And I know many people understand this, particularly ex-criminals, ex-prisoners, those who mentor criminals, those who mentor uh, pr uh, prisoners and criminals understand this better than anybody. You go to an inner city and you see former gang members who will become mentors to the young idiots. You're talking about guys who have scars on their face and bullet wounds in their body. That's exactly what I'm talking about. They know what it is to have the evil impulse, but they found, most of them found Jesus. They found God. And they become great Christians and great salva a great salvation for, their, for the hood. You know what I'm saying? So within all of us, there's a Satan-like feeling. But you, you, if you get afraid of it, if, you, if you're afraid of it, you're destroyed by it. You'll start reaching for the drugs, the pills, the, dr the alcohol, whatever it is you need. You're going to reach for that to bury that impulse that scares you. But you have to embrace the devil. That's what I'm trying to say to you. Dance with the devil because the devil is your best friend. And I know many of you don't want to accept that because you think there's a dichotomy between doing good and doing bad. You think there's a dichotomy between you and the evil forces in the world, but you are the evil forces in the world. And that's all I could say on the issue. I think I've explained it the best I can. It goes back to my concept of you, we are the eagle. When I've told you don't poison the earth, when I've told you that we are here to minister to the animals of the earth, minister to the earth, minister to the air, minister to the water. We're not supposed to pollute them. We're not supposed to destroy them. We're not supposed to exploit them. We're not supposed to hurt them. What are we? We are the shepherds of the earth that we were given by God. We're only visiting this planet. We have to take care of it. That's the same exact thing. We have to watch our evil impulses, and that's true whether it be uh, with the earth or with our own nature. I was also thinking about dogs and, 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 and cats and pets and how beautifully we treat these animals here in America and how, unfortunately, people who come from the third world, especially from backwards Islamic nations, think that animals are dirty and that they should be mistreated. And they have to understand how to treat animals because in their own country they treat animals worse than dogs. When you say he treats her like a dog, what are you, what are you saying? or she treats him like a dog, what are you actually saying? You're not really talking about America because most people treat their animals very well. Okay, maybe we exalt our animals a little bit too much, but there's a certain, uh, I'm looking for the right word, there is a certain sanctity in treating an animal very well because at the end of the day, we're smarter than them, we're stronger than them, and we have their, their life and their death in our hands.
And I suppose that shows that we are better people for treating our animals so well, even spoiling them. Okay? It's as simple as that. I don't know what else more you want to hear about this, but I want to hear from you, WABC in New York City. Niraj, welcome to the program. Go ahead, please. Hey, how are you doing? What's on your mind, Niraj? Yeah, I heard. I, I'm a regular listener. I like what you say. Uh, but you just, uh, in your you, when you were reading the paragraph, you made a comment about Hinduism. And uh, I'm a Hindu, and you said we uh, worship uh, exotic uh, something, exotic uh, things. Actually, God in Hinduism is existence, consciousness, bliss, which is limitless in time, limitless in space. It, it is all pervasive. It's not exotic things. So I would appreciate if you can correct yourself and do a little bit of reading. Well, first of all, I appreciate your listening so carefully, but I think you misinterpreted what I said. And, and what, I'm, what I'm trying to do is show you the unity of all people, not the dichotomy between all people, because in my last words of the book, I'm trying to have people recognize that there are people who do not worship God the way we do in the West who are also worshiping God in their own way. That's what I was actually saying there, Raj. That's what I wrote. Perhaps it was not clear enough. I wish I could find the exact words. I can't seem to put my hands on it. I will in a minute. Um, I had a friend who was a Hindu, by the way, when I was in early years of my graduate school. I remember him to this day, pra pra Prasad. And one day we stood on the roof of a hospital where we were both working, and I asked him to explain to me what is Hinduism. And he looked at the ocean, and he said to me, Hinduism, in Hinduism we believe that life is like the ocean. It keeps rolling in and rolling in and rolling in and it never ends. Is that closer to what uh, you are trying to say? Yes. So let me read the sentence I wrote and see if it still offends you, given that you see that I do see what you see. I said, those who accept Jesus as the Son of God call themselves Christians. Those who bow to Allah are called Muslims. Jews worship the single entity they call God. What of Hindus who worship not God, but fantastic entities? So what you're saying is, I'm alleging that it's just entities, not God. Yes. All right, but you're saying that these fantastic entities that, to we in the West, when we see an elephant with eight trunks, that is a fantastic entity. So how does that bring the Hindu to God? Uh, that elephant is not God. We don't worship the, that elephant. We don't worship the... The idols, we don't, those are just symbols. We worship the spirit behind it, which is everywhere. God That's what I'm trying to understand. I mean, I love the Hindu art and the Hindu symbolism, but what does it mean? A woman with 12 arms, what does that symbolize? Uh, it symbolizes the power of God, and it exists everywhere. There's no place in the world where God does not exist. So even in an elephant, even in a monkey, God exists is what you're saying to a Hindu. A Hindu sees God in a monkey, a Hindu sees God in an elephant, correct? Yes, yes, in you and me and everywhere. So in essence, the, the Hindus are, are worshipping the same God we're all worshipping. Do, do you believe in a single, do you believe in a single, let me ask you this, do you believe that there is a single God or many gods? Single. Hinduism is a monoethic religion. We believe in single God. Just in Unbelievable. You know that you have just given me a revelation, Niraj? You have given Michael, a re uh, and I'm willing to admit it on this program, I did not know that. I thought that Hindus certainly were God-fearing, but I thought you believed in many gods. No, 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 no. It is the concept of Brahman, which is existence, consciousness, bliss. The power that is all pervasive, it is omniscient, omnipresent, it is limitless in time, limitless in space, it exists in every entity, every, everything, uh, there is nothing apart from it, and it's everywhere. And since we, we cannot visualize it, we visualize it with all these elephants and uh, the goddess and the woman with eight arms, and these are just symbols, they don't mean anything. Unbelievable. Now, Raj, let me tell you something. You're a very important caller for me and millions of people who are listening because I think they now understand Hinduism better than ever in their lives. I certainly do. And I hope that you'll be um, 
Well, it would be my honor to send you a copy when it's out of God, Faith, and Reason. Would you read that book if I sent it to you? I would definitely read. Well, you're going to get it in the Raj, and I'm so happy you listened to this program. I think people are going to find out how how versatile the audience is. I hate to use the word diverse. It's overused. Uh, how versatile my audience really is and how many different walks of life you may hear on the program. Having heard that, I just got to say this. I've never met a Hindu I didn't like. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. A Hindu Explains God to the Savage Nation would be the title of the last caller. We're going to capture that sound and put it on michaelsavage.com so the whole world can share it with each other. I thought it was an amazing moment in my radio career because it broke new ground. I mean, we can talk about politics, this and that. And, you know, all right, we all heard it, whatever. This was new. New is good. New is good in a world of the same. New is good in the world of the media. Steve on KSFO, welcome to the program. What's on your mind? Well, I, I heard your caller talk about his explanation of the Hindu faith and how he also believes what we all believe in, which is God. And uh, it brought me to tears, and I'm having a hard time telling you because of that, but it was great. It was good. Well, why did it bring you as a Christian to tears? Why? Uh, I'm just in a state where... I lost my father, and I listen to you, and I listen to this radio every day, and it helps. And I appreciate. Well, I am. I am like America's father. I know that. I become that. I used to be America's uncle. I have now become a father to millions of people because there are no fathers left, by and large. They're gone. I'm lucky. And and with the attacks upon the world that we believe in by the vermin on the left, the communists, the socialists, the invaders. Uh, it's more important than ever that people support me because I'm one of the last voices left in this country. Uh, it's a strong voice, and I know that, and the voice is strong not because of me but because of God. Listen to me. God has given me this microphone for a couple of reasons, and it's not to enrich myself. God gives me the strength to get up every morning, get myself together, whatever, and get up here and be cogent and speak to the uh, American people who tune in and around the world because there's a reason for it. There's a reason for everything. And when I'm no longer on the radio, it will be because God doesn't want me on the radio. Do you understand that it's all about that? Yeah, I'm glad. So, 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 so what I'm saying is that caller who called out of nowhere, the Hindu caller, he gave me a revelation. I never knew that these fantastic entities of the elephant with eight, eight trunks or the woman with 12 arms were not idols. He was telling me something I did not know. But as I said, not so jokingly, I've never met a Hindu I didn't like. I have gotten along with Sikhs and Hindus wherever I've met them on the planet. It's that simple. And there's no if, ands, or buts. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Compare this to the filth that's put up by Warner Records or whoever's left in the business. Compare this majesty, the majesty of this great white male and his composition to the filth that passes for music and arts today. And I welcome you and I challenge you to pro produce anything on this show and tell me anything that approaches this. Nothing. Nothing approaches Mozart's Requiem, which was written by him as music for his father's funeral. And I want you to remember that this music has an eternal element to it. It doesn't matter what you believe in. Any human being who hears this music, be he a pagan, be she a Mayan, will be moved by this music because we are all at one point just tuning forks looking for the residents. And I'll leave it at that. I don't want to get into too much of the guru stuff. I'll save that for when I'm a little older. I'm not ready for the saffron robe and the uh, Oregon ranch yet. 
maybe tomorrow. Maybe when I'm 100, I'll become a guru. Right now, I'm only a talk show host. There are many, many steps in the road. Many, many steps. If you've read Steppenwolf, you'll know what I'm talking about. We're all Steppenwolves, and we're all stepping from one plane to another, some up, some down. And each day we go through our Steppenwolf phases, going up and going down. There's no straight up, there's no straight down. And one other note I want to mention, I don't know how we even got here today. I didn't plan on it. I didn't expect to talk about a book that won't be out for a long while. But I'm here because this is what I'm doing. I'm living it, I'm breathing it, I'm dreaming it. Uh, God, faith, and reason. I just have a feeling about this thing. It's going to hit a, uh, it's going to strike a universal note across many, many planes and many, many types of people. And mainly the secular. I do not believe the religious will buy this book. I'm positive that the, the devout Christians will not touch the book because it's not solely about Jesus. I'm sure the Orthodox Jews won't buy the book because they don't buy secular books. I have a feeling that there are many, many millions of people who are no longer faithful, who come from a background of faith, whether it be two generations ago or even in their own parents' lives, who will feel that spark again by seeing the odyssey of one man and his constant search in and out and out and in, uh, as was written, the garbage pail of faith. I mean, you know, that's the way it is. I'm not one of these people who's always in one place or the other. I, in that way, in that way, I'm a Steppenwolf. But getting back to something else, there's one other thing I have to mention because it just crossed my mind, and, you know, this is a, an intuitive program without a script. Uh, I have some formats that I follow and some ideas and loads of stories and sound that the guys put together, and we talk all morning. And then as the show evolves, it evolves into what it is. It's an organic show. Yesterday, as I was debating back and forth with my publisher, remember the book was in galleys. It was not just a manuscript. It was already set in type, and things came up. Well, I was asked this question. He says to me, in the last few scenes, you talk about this man before he dies, before he's buried. And he says to his son, look, look, he says, there she is, the angel of death. Now, he's dying of cancer in this book, a man who was buried. And he says, look, 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 Harry, look, there's the angel of death. She's sitting next to you on the couch. And his son Harry says, Pop, there's no one here. There's no one here. And then the father who was dying goes in the bathroom, and he comes out, and he says, a few minutes later in the book, he says, Harry, look, there he is. Harry, look, there he is. He's there sitting next to you. So the editor says to me, Michael, you said, look, there she is, the angel of death. And you said, there he is, the angel of death. Did you make a mistake? And I said, no, I didn't make a mistake. I said, death is a duality. Death is not gender specific. Death is he, death is she. Death is a, is a circle. Death is not a he, death is not a she. So I truly believe that those who believe will understand what I did, and those who don't and are cynical will never understand. They'll watch the Emmys and laugh at each other, and then go have a toke of a rotten joint and think that they're superior to everyone on the planet. And that doesn't make them evil, it makes them just stupid. It's that simple. Let's take some calls. Misty on KSFO, welcome to the program. You're on the Savage Nation. Hi, Michael. Um, I just wanted to say a couple things. I'm an apologist, so I have a bit of wisdom about God's false God. Wait, I'm uh, sorry, ma'am. You said you're an apolo you're, a, you, you're an apologist. An apologist means I have sense, both spirit and actual fact about. Right. Ma'am, you. Ma I'm sorry. I know you're intelligent. I'm not mocking you. Did you say apologist? Apologist. What's an apologist? An apologist is one who kind of studies all the different faiths, be it Allah, Buddha, uh, Hare Krishna, and I also have the spirit of God, so I can kind of discern. I guess I can say I can discern spirits. And when someone speaks about monotheism, they believe in that that God is one God. They, but they are worshiping many gods and false gods. So these, these people who are worshiping that one God, yeah. I believe there are many, many, many false gods. Be it Allah, they believe Allah is one God, and they worship Allah, which I believe is a false god. 
Another monotheism would be uh, Mormonism. They actually believe that God is, that there is one God, but they don't believe in the Holy Spirit of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost being one God. The Christian God believes there is only one God, but in three parts. So it's much more in-depth and elaborate than you can imagine, and I do believe there is also a literal devil that is a spirit, and that spirit goes through all these different avenues of life, be it good, we have uh, all these different false places where he's trying to kind of spread this deceit. And you are correct about there is one God that made all of us, but it is for us to find out who that one true God is. What? I don't understand. When you say you're an apologist, is that a, a uh, religion? No, an apologist, how do I say it? You know how you're kind of a sage in a way, and you know things about um, God puts things in your ear, and you have prophetic wisdom about certain things? I believe that your book is being written because you are still seeking, as we all are, and it's going to lead you down more paths and more understanding as these things open up. An apologist, um, you can read, there's some great apologists. There's, there's a man that wrote Kingdom of the Cult. He's an apologist. There's other apologists you can look up. Ravi, Ravi Zacharias is a world-renowned apologist. I highly recommend him. Now, my wisdom... I believe it's you know, I have a friend who's a former Navy SEAL who was a very spiritual man, and he read the last words of my book, and you know what he said? He said, this is the last piece of the Old Testament that was left out. He said, you're like an ancient prophet who was reborn in our time. What would you say to a thing like that? Madness? Well, you know what, you know what Michael? What I truly believe is we have, I believe that the Bible is the Word of God, and it is the truth, but we have to take the whole Word into no, a no, but you know, I, I'd like you to make it very personal for me. This man, who is very spiritual and has been through death and life, he's taken lives and he's given lives. So he's, he knows more about it than most of us do. Warriors know more about life than most of us do because they take life and they give life. He read what I wrote at the end of that book, and he said, "You're like an ancient. You're like an ancient prophet. It's like a missing piece from the Old Testament." How would you relate to that? Michael, what I would say is we all are warring in this life, and some of us are warriors, and there's only a few of us, and I happen to be one of them. And I would say that you are as well. But now wait, now when you say a warrior, do you mean you mean you've dropped, very, you've dropped, ma'am, you've dropped out of a parachute uh, at a high altitude and opened it at a low altitude and went into a mission to kill someone in a covert way? Oh, I can't even explain the depth when you're on the front lines. You know about it. How can you sum that up in one second? Four well, I'm not on the front line, but I'm saying, are you an actual military warrior? Um, if you call life and death, uh, but not in a, uh, let's say, a battlefield in uh, Vietnam, but if you live that here in this life and you're dealing with demons and devils and catastrophes and near-death crashes and all kinds of things and trying to bring people from darkness into light and all these different things. We all war against the same enemy. The all right, I agree with that. But I think that those who jump out of airplanes, I think those who jump out of airplanes in the dark at 35,000 feet uh, and then open their parachute at 3,000 feet know a little bit more about life and death than I do. That's correct, but we all still face the same judgment. We all still have God, and we all still have to deal with the devil. And that's the facts. We're in, we're in a war between those two factions. And what I would say, the only thing that I could say to you to, to seek the final, complete wisdom is open the New Testament, sit in it, and pray into it, and God will reveal more to you. Yeah, but you see, you're missing the whole point of my book. My point, of, the point of my book is that it's not solely the New Testament that talks about God. You're excluding all the other millions of people, billions of people on the planet yeah. who do not practice Christianity, <laughs> and you cannot, wait, and you cannot reject them simply because they don't follow Jesus. Right, but this is the thing, Michael. You ascribe to the Old Testament, and that's where you get your wisdom, and that is the God that you follow. If all these other gods are, or let's say, okay, we got Allah, we got Buddha, we got Hare Krishna, we got uh, 
Joseph Smith, we've got atheism, we've got agnostics, we've got worshiping just the spirits, we've got worshiping... Yeah, uh, you've got, you've got the, 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 um, the, 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 you've got the, the false idols of the Academy Awards, for example. So they all follow different paths to, to worship. Okay, so what's, what's your point? But they're all following different paths. This is the key, Michael. They're following different paths. Some of those paths may eventually lead them to the truth, to the truth if they find out who the true God is. Otherwise, they're going to be deceived. We have to find... Uh, let, let me explain it in a simple way for the, for the mass market, the mass audience that, are, that is listening to, to the show. I see the world of different, um, different religions as spokes on a, on a wheel, a spiritual wheel, and the hub of the wheel is God. And it doesn't matter to me which spoke the person traverses to get to the hub. So that spoke can be Christianity, it could be Judaism, it could be Hinduism, it could be Islam, it could be the Holy Spirit. As long as that spoke leads to the one God, the God, one God, it's the same to me. It's all human beings striving for the same answer. I'm going to send you a copy of God, Faith, and reason when it is out please stay on the line i'll be right back join the savage nation call now 855-400-SAVAGE 855-400-7282 savage sponsored by swiss america the only company i trust with my financial future call 800-289-2646 or swissamerica.com I learned something shocking from a um, recent FBI report. Do you know that the um, average property loss from just one home break-in is $2,316? Think of it. One burglary over $2,000. If you tally up all the burglaries in this nation, it's worse. The total loss is in the billions. And with so much to lose, I'm telling you, it's as important as ever to protect your home. I want you to try it with Simply Safe Home Security. Simply Safe protects every door and window in your home. The system is completely wireless. You can set it up yourself, and you don't have to drill any holes in your wall, and you're going to have professional alarm monitoring around the clock ready to send police. That's just $15 a month with Simply Safe. You can be sure that your home and your things are protected. Go to simplysafesavage.com. You're going to get a special 10% off when you order today. S I M P L I safe savage dot com. Or if you want the security system right away, visit your local Best Buy. You'll have your home protected by tonight. That is simply safe dot com for ten percent off simply safe savage dot com. Eight five five four eight seven two eight two my the time is a flying. It's the old, old thing in radio. When you're dragging the show stinks. And when the time flies, it's great. If you are enjoying it, the time will just pass like it didn't even happen. If you're calling it in, you're just faking it, you'll be gagging before the third hour, the first hour is over. And you'll be gagging by the finish line. Well, I'm flying, I'm not gagging. Liz on KSFO line one, go ahead. It's really good. It's really good. Liz, what's on your mind? Oh, gosh, I didn't know I was on. I'm just um, hearing you, and I'm new to your show, and I'm, you know, going to be 48, and I'm really feeling your book. I want to know the title of it. I want to know, um, you know, religion is a belief held by a group of people who all understand God in the same way. But usually one teacher taught them about God, right? So but what, what, well, My book is called God, Faith, and Reason. It'll be out in November. You can buy it on Amazon right now, but... What if this book takes off around the world and brings people together? I will still be banned by Fox News. Can you imagine that? I still won't be on CBS, who would rather run the Emmys, that someone is trying to bring people together instead of divide them. That's the world we're living in. Do you, is your actual name Savage or is it a stage name? Just curious. Because, uh, you know, you're not Buddha, you're not Muhammad, you're not, you know, uh, Jesus Christ, you're not, you know, all these but but you are teaching me in this hour that I've been with you about religion. And I'm curious because at the same time, being on hold, 
you know, I'm hearing your voice and it's selling me something, you know, because, of course, it's a job. So they make you use your voice to sell. No, they don't make me do anything. The voice came before the job, Liz. Nobody coached me on how to have a voice. This voice was given to me as a gift by God. It was not trained. I didn't go to school to become a broadcaster. All right, Liz, thank you for listening. I'm glad you're listening to the show. Stay in the line. We'll send you a copy of God, Faith, and Reason out in November, just before the holidays. You can order it night now, I guess, on Amazon.com. Well, go to michaelsavage.com for all of today's show stories. I'll be right back. Be here or be nowhere. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. Let's go back to the uh, headlines on michaelsavage.com. Covert hate the lowest common denominator top right. Furious worshippers turn on police when they enter their mosque without taking off their shoes. And that's because it's a religion of peace. That's because it's a religion that assimilates very well. That's because it's a religion of tolerance. That's because it's a religion of love. And the more I thought about it, the more I thought about the suicide of the West. The more I see of this wonderful religion of peace, the more I realize we are a suicidal nation. It's far worse in England, it's far worse in France, Belgium, Germany, than it is here. And were it not for Donald Trump, we'd be England today and there'd be no England anymore. So thank God we have Donald Trump in the White House who understands exactly what it is, which is an ex existential threat to your way of life and your existence, especially if you're an atheist who likes the Emmys. You are the biggest target of these wonderful practitioners of the religion of peace that you so badly want to love so much. Brown University, once great Ivy League school, descended into the toilet a long time ago, uh, and it is now offering, if you can believe this, segregated student dinners for black students and then another one for Muslim women only. Isn't it wonderful to see how progressive progressives really aren't? Next story, michaelsavage.com linked up. Obama cashes in. That's right, man of the people. Oh, yeah, minority president. He didn't like the millionaires and billionaires much till he got out of office when he traveled with them and he just made $1.2 million for only three Wall Street speeches. And you progressives are so stupid, you'll believe anything he sold you. Swedish state media boss caught trying to buy virginity of underage girl. What happened to Sweden? St. Louis, 80 arrests and third night of protests. New segregation signs pop up in leftist establishments. Anyone they don't like, they call a hater. And you're not welcome. Yeah. Hmm. Well, we could also talk about the hermit kingdom of North Korea, where one family robs everything from everybody, and Alec Baldwin and Jesse Jackson and Madeleine Albright seem to love him. Last night, covert hate, the lowest common denominator... I didn't watch it, no. I've never watched the Emmys, no. But people on, in the business said, have you seen it? Have you heard it? Have you seen what that low-grade phony with eyeglasses did? I said, no. I know this. The ratings are showing people are tuning out of this low-grade hatred of the Emmys because they're sick of watching low-IQ, talentless TV puppets salute each other. Last night, every hater in Hollywood took to the stage, and in what was supposed to be an award show, turned into nothing but three hours of bashing Americans who voted for Donald Trump. The Emmy showed the underbelly of Hollywood for what it really is, drugs, sex, and bad rock and roll. Covert people who hate you and hate me. The people who go to their movies were probably not even watching the Emmys. They think you're stupid, and they showed you that last night. Nothing but bashing of the president, and none of it real. For example, let me prove it in one sentence. One stupid actress after another. 
One arty actress after another. You know the kind of kids who went to the high school of performing arts because they couldn't study? You know the kind of kids who had ADD and couldn't focus on real subjects? They went to arts and uh, entertainment. One after the other, they said we're living in fascism. Now, let me tell you something, morons. Lily Tomlin, Alec Baldwin, Stephen, Jane Fonda, Reese Witherspoon, Julia Lewis, Dreyfus. What do you need three names for, by the way? Danny Glover, John Lithgow. Listen, morons, if you were living in fa fascism, you wouldn't be there on that stage. You'd be behind bars. Just by the evidence of the reality of you're able to call the president a fascist, it shows your drug-addicted dolts to most of Americans who tuned out. You see, the Emmys are nothing but a trade show. Like garbage men who give each other awards. Remember in the, in the show The Sopranos, there was the Carding Association Awards for those in the garbage business. Like most creative dumpster, most beautiful garbage truck. That's what you saw last night. It's made to seem important, but it's not. Did you watch the show? Do you ever watch the show? Who watches the show? I looked into the demographics. The demographics are women 49 and up, meaning women who have nothing to do meaning women who sit at home and eat chocolate and take a diabetes pill. The Emmys is designed to appeal to only the lowest common denominator. It's for the people who? Is it for the people who actually spend money on anything? Or those who read the magazines on the checkout stand? These are the people who will do whatever these brainless, brainless, talentless, low-grade failure actors and actresses tell them to do because they're on TV. You tell them the president is Hitler, and the idiots believe it. You tell them the president is trying to hurt them, both mentally and physically, and the idiots believe it. This show was bad for the country. It's bad for everyone in it. The lemmings are the reason the demon cats have any power whatsoever. But it wasn't always this way. Hollywood, you see, was once very, very pro-American. If you recall your history books during World War II, they stood up for America. They backed the war effort. They promoted rubber drives, and I'm not talking about birth control. Steel drives, war bonds, anything to help our boys who are dying over there in Europe and in the Pacific. Some great actors like Jimmy Stewart and others actually served in the military. And then when they came out, they made sure their movies reflected their love of America. Why don't you see that today? Why do you see a low-grade cockamamie idiot like Stephen Covert or the failed actor Alec Baldwin making idiots of themselves? They're nothing more than low creatures who care only of themselves and hamming it up in front of a camera. And what they see as virtue is tearing down everything that we believe in, everything that built America in the first place, even those who built the cameras, even those who built the networks, even those who built television itself. Yeah, that's what they're tearing back down. Of course, they're tearing down God and family as well. They have to tear that down because it's the only way they can garner any power amongst the illiterates who watch them. Well, the good news is their ratings have been collapsing over the years. People are tuning out of this low-grade hatred of the Emmys because they got sick of watching low-IQ, talentless, drug-addicted puppets salute each other when half the nation is insane, turning on the other half that's quite rational and knows what must be done to save the country. Instead, every day you read attacks on Trump, not attacks on ISIS. Every day you read attacks on Trump, not attacks on Kim Jong-un. This is what the American media has become. Hollywood, the news business, it's all the same. And so after another attack in London, here goes Prime Minister May attacking Trump instead of attacking the Islamo-fascist that she lets run wild in London. Listen to her in clip three about this ninny telling people what to do after another bomb on another uh, London transport. Listen to this one. The public should go about their daily lives, but remain vigilant. And people who are traveling in London will see an increased I can't armed take peace it. presence. I can't take it. Could you imagine we've gone from Churchill to May in just one generation? That the great England has degenerated into a non-existent nation? That they would elect a woman like this? A woman like this who has absolutely no ability to protect her own people? They should go around their daily lives and remain vigilant. What in the world does remain vigilant mean? What does that actually mean? If you see a man from the Middle East with a bomb in his hand, don't assume he's going to set it off. 
until it actually goes off because we may arrest you first for racism? Is that what she means by remain vigilant? I mean, this is how crazy it's become. How it ends, I don't know. I have some feelings on how this all ends. But I think only God knows how it ends. God, faith, and reason. No wonder I wrote the book. There's nothing left but God. There's nothing left but God. There's nothing left anymore. John J. Professor slammed after tweeting, he's proud to teach future dead cops. I said, what? This man is allowed to teach at John J. College? Here is a guy who has a name, and he's boasting. His name is Mike Isaacson, don't you know? And he writes this. This is a professor now. Some of you all might think it sucks being an anti-fascist teaching at John Jay College, but I think it's a privilege to teach future dead cops. This could only happen in America, where half the nation is insane. Half the nation is totally insane. Professor Michael Isaacson works in the CUNY Criminal Justice College's Economics Department. How did he even get a job? How did the man get a job in a college that teaches future policemen how to do their job? How? Have you seen who has taken over the colleges? Have you taken a look at the women, so-called? Have you taken a look at the men, so-called, who have invaded and destroyed the academy across America? Patrolman Benevolent Association President Patrick Lynch slammed the tweet and called for his immediate firing. No kidding. I'd like to know who hired him. That's who I would fire. You want to see the whole story? Go to michaelsavage.com. Some of you all might think it sucks being an anti-fascist, he tweeted, teaching at John Jay College, but I think it's a privilege to teach future dead cops and see the smiling, bearded face of the member of Antifa. And he calls himself an anti-fascist? No, he is the enemy within, in my estimation. He is the enemy within, and the DHS should arrest him immediately. This is not free speech. Not free speech at all. We had a choice in the last election to go soft on terror and bring in more Muslims, and that was Hillary Clinton, or go hard on terror and stop more Muslims, uh, and that was Donald Trump. And we voted for Donald Trump, and now he's been stopped. He's been hamstrung by the liberal media, the liberal professors, and the maniacs in this country who are suicidal. And I don't want to talk anymore. I don't even want to say another word. That's enough. I made my point. It's a very, very hard time to be a rational man in an, irration, in an irrational time. If you're one of the drugged Americans, whether it's legal drugs like, uh, you know, serotonin reuptake inhibitors, you're a drug addict. If you're on an antidepressant, you're a drug addict. Your mind is not functioning properly. If you're a person who takes Xanax on a regular basis, you're a drug addict. If you're taking any pharmaceutical that suppresses your mind in any way, any psychoactive chemical. I don't care whether it's legal or illegal, you're a drug addict. It doesn't matter whether a quack with a stethoscope told you to take it, you're a drug addict. Do you know what percentage of this population is on drugs? Do you know how few of us take no medication? I'm proud to say I'm one of them. I take no medication of any kind, whether it's for cholesterol, zero, nothing, nothing. No one could believe I don't. I go to a doctor, the first thing they ask you is, uh, what prescription drugs are you on? And I say none. And they look at me. They say, but you're, you're, what do you mean none? I said, no, I take none. How is that possible that you take none? Why aren't you like the rest of us? Why aren't you a walking dead? Why aren't you a zombie like the rest of us? Why is your mind not numbed? Answer, because it isn't. So I, as I said to you, if, you're a, if you are a rational person who is not medicated, legally or illegally, it's a very tough time to be an American. And so we now face a fat maniac in North Korea, and I keep using the word fat maniac because it makes a better stereotypical image of who he actually is. I'm not going to call him Mr. This or Mr. That. The man is threatening the stability of the entire world. I want you to think very clearly, even if you're on drugs, of what would happen if mentally ill un launched a missile at Japan. It would set off a chain reaction of nuclear war. The world cannot afford that. He must be stopped before he does that. There are very few options. I'm aware of that. And many innocent North Koreans must die in order to stop him. We're aware of that as well. And he also has hundreds of thousands of artillery pieces with conventional weapons aimed at South Korea that could be launched the moment he is killed. I'm aware of that. It's a very, very difficult situation. 
but it's not one that this country has not faced before. It faced it with Hitler, and Berlin was reduced to rubble. Do you realize how many innocent Germans were killed uh, because of Hitler's mania? Do you understand that that is sometimes what happens in the world when the people have no control over their leadership? Do you understand how ugly that is, and yet it's either kill or be killed? It's the survival of the fittest. Do you understand the law of the land and the law of the jungle? It's called survival of the fittest. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. I'm going to give you a treat today. My book ended, God, Faith, and Reason, at a funeral of a friend's father who's been fictionalized. And the last lines of the book were these. I remember them very well. As the father is being lowered into the grave and the Mexican grave diggers are moved by the Jewish prayers at the grave site, uh, my friend's friend, an Israeli intelligence agent, as I was told, comes over and says this at the grave site. Well, when none of us know where we're going to die, as he said with the 70s rockers cackle. That was the la those were the last lines of God, Faith, and Reason. Three people said, you can't end the book that way. It's not uplifting enough. You've got to give people something to have faith in. They'll think you're faithless. Are they to assume that you don't believe in God by saying a thing like that? Well, I, we went back and forth, and I argued with them, and I said, the statement itself that we don't know where we're going to die actually is a worship in itself. What we're saying is God knows where we're going to die. We don't. But they didn't get it. Nobody got it. So what we did was is we took lines that are all my own. Every last word in this book were from my writings over the last 40 years. And we took them from the uh, other sections. And here's how the book ends. Are you ready? It's only three paragraphs. God, faith, and reason. Here's what I wrote. God is not linear. God is infinite. Envision the Milky Way. All the stars and all the universes, all the pebbles, every grain of sand, all the crawling insects. God created all things big and small. How we approach the Creator defines us. Those who accept Jesus as the Son of God call themselves Christians. Those who bow to Allah are called Muslims. Jews worship the single entity they call God. What of Hindus? What of Hindus who worship not God but fantastic entities? And Buddhists who read their poetry of life and bow down to an idol. What do we say of the many who worship the great spirit? How do we define those who don't believe in an all-powerful God, but may spend their conscious minutes pondering the stars and planets, the movements of celestial bodies, the quarks and sparks of dying stars millions of light years away, or those who argue over causality, the physicists and scientists who say there is no God except for rational thought and electrical impulses that die when our bodies no longer emit signs of life. Are they not seeking the answer to this ancient riddle? As Joel's friend said at the funeral, we never know where we're going to die, and we certainly don't know what comes next. In the meantime, we can look for the presence of God, even here, amidst all the ills of the world. In the end, the search to find God is the finding itself. That's the new ending of uh, my book. You like that ending better than we never know where we're going to die, he said with a rocker's cackle, a 70s rocker's cackle. I like the 70s rocker's cackle because it's sort of a more artistic ending for a movie. But for my audience and for this book of God, Faith, and Reason, this is actually probably a more hopeful ending, right? Savage. Some Savage Nation weekend headlines. Um, the four American tourists attacked with acid in France are Boston College students. Four young girls walking around at the St. Charles train, train station in Marseille, France. And a woman unidentified runs up to them and throws acid in their face. They will not identify the woman, but they're quick to tell us that she's 41 years old. She has mental Ill, uh, problems. And it's not terrorism related. I wonder why they won't tell us her name or give us her picture. In either case, these four girls will be traumatized and or scarred for life. And let me warn you about something else. There is a war against the West 
going on in Europe now. Be aware of the fact that there are acid attacks, etc., in addition to the bombings, which we know about from our good friends who practice the religion of peace. There are over 200 re reported acid attacks in London alone, covered up by the mayor of London. This surely is the death of the West. This is the savage nation. If you get a comment on any of these depressing stories, don't bother, because you can't do a better job than I just did. And let us see what else is in here. Uh, oh, oh, this you have to see. Oh, no, I'm not ready for it. The propaganda is so heavy, I can't even do it. I'm not ready to jump. Trump at the U.N. Can he make America great again? All right, he was at the U.N. Let's hear the president at the U.N. saying the right things in clip two. Yet in recent years, the United Nations has not reached its full potential because of bureaucracy and mismanagement. While the United right. Nations on a regular budget has increased Good. by 140 percent and its staff has more than doubled since 2000, we are not seeing wow. the results in line with this investment. But I know that's right. that under the Secretary General, that's changing, and it's changing fast, and we've seen it. That's why we commend the Secretary General and his call for the United Nations to focus more on people and less on bureaucracy. That's a very brave speech to the world uh, diplomats at the U.N., and it's long overdue. Because we all know that it's people who go there to feather their own nests. They do very little good on the planet uh, these days. Some good, but not really that much good. When has the U.N. last done anything of value? I, I can't even remember. Why are they not controlling North Korea? Why are they not stopping the Islamic terrorist attacks on the West? Why don't they even mention Islamic terror attacks in their relationship to the over-interpretation or the literal interpretation of the holy book why is that not a topic that is important to the UN the answer is because it's a useless organization I have said for years get the US out of the UN close the building down and convert it into a homeless shelter and let the diplomats go to Brussels where they'll be more comfortable I have an intuitive feeling that owing to the hatred in the political world as evidenced last night by the drug addicts who performed uh, in the most uh, obscene manner. The people are turning off entertainment, they're turning off politics, I think they're even turning off sports because of the hatred on the field. Where does that leave them? What does it leave them? I don't have an answer, everyone has their own answer. I think that a lot of people are turning back toward family, faith, and God. Now, I conceived of this book many years ago, you know, God, Faith, and, and Reason, but it happens to be coming out November 14th, and I'm gonna make a prediction that you're going to hear a lot more about it than you would imagine. I think it's going to catch a spiritual or faith wave in this country that is emerging. So I read for you in my last words, and it was supposed to end at a funeral, at a graveyard rather, of a friend's father that I went to in the 1980s, where they're lowering him in the ground. No one was there but me and the friend and, you know, my wife. And uh, there was no one really there. The guy was a Holocaust survivor who was buried a very, very angry man. His fingers have been cut off in a saw by the Nazis. I love these schmucks at the Emmys last night. They don't even know what Nazism is, these fools. It's sad. It's sad to, to appropriate a term like Nazi and so abuse it by calling Trump a Nazi is sickening. But I expect that from uh, the Colberts and the other lightweights in the, in, the, in, the, in the world of entertainment. So this guy was being buried lowered in the ground, they were Mexican grave diggers, and there were some Orthodox Jewish guys praying, and their chants were so, I don't have the words for it, cut through the fog, that the Mexicans were moved by it, because all cultures respect funerals, with rare exception. I don't have to now give a, a, an offhanded jape. So he's being lowered in the ground, and the last words of the book were supposed to be, as his friend from Israeli intelligence said to me, as he was lowered in the ground, we never know where we're going to die, as he said with a 70s rocker's cackle. That was supposed to be the end of the book. So publisher, this one, that one, said it's too negative. you got to give people hope. And I argue, no, 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 no. I said, this is hopeful. This shows you that we're in God's hands. We don't know where we're going to die. That's the greatest worship you can say in a book. That's like saying it's not in your hand. Like you say, well, you commit suicide. 
I'll prove that I'm stronger than God. No, you're not. It's God's hand making you commit suicide. See, you don't know who you're dealing with here. I have the answer for everything. They used to say when I was getting my doctorate, he had a mind like a steel trap about my professor. Well, I don't like the idea of a mind like a steel trap. I like the idea of a mind like a fluid sphere rather than a steel trap. But somehow in the discussion in the last hour, you want me to talk about Trump and the Emmys? I'm not going to do it for right now. First of all, I have a migraine. That's number one. Number two, my head is going here, so I can't go where my head's not going. So I said that people want to know why, why there's Satan, why there's the devil, etc. And I said to you, I spoke about this with a mystical Jewish, a Jewish mystic 40 years ago. I asked him the same questions. Why do I have these impulses? Why do I have these desires? Why am I driven in this way or that way? And he said to me, they call it, the Jewish people call that the Yetzahara, meaning the evil impulse. And we, we all have the evil impulse. And he tried to tell me about former criminals who he knew. I'm talking gangsters. I'm talking Jewish gangsters. I'm not talking about little con men. Really bad people who discovered God and discovered how to channel the Yetzahara and became great men for the good of mankind. And he said to me, the greater the Yetzahara, meaning the greater the evil spirit in man, the more capacity he has for doing good. That was one of the, that was E equals MC squared for me. That was Einstein's theory of relativity for me. That gave me an understanding that the stronger your impulses are to do bad, the greater you have the capacity to do good. It means you have tremendous energy and tremendous passion that, if harnessed correctly, can do great good on the earth. And I know many people understand this, particularly ex-criminals, ex-prisoners, those who mentor criminals, those who mentor uh, uh, prisoners and criminals, understand this better than anybody. You go to an inner city and you see former gang members who will become mentors to the young idiots. You're talking about guys who have scars on their face and bullet wounds on their body. That's exactly what I'm talking about. They know what it is to have the evil impulse, but they found, most of them found Jesus, they found God, and they become great Christians and great salva a great salvation for, their, for the hood. You know what I'm saying? So within all of us, there's a Satan-like feeling. But you, you, if you get afraid of it, if, you, if you're afraid of it, you're destroyed by it. You'll start reaching for the drugs, the pills, the, dr the alcohol, whatever it is you need, you're going to reach for that to bury that impulse that scares you. But you have to embrace the devil. That's what I'm trying to say to you. Dance with the devil because the devil is your best friend. And I know many of you don't want to accept that because you think there's a dichotomy between doing good and doing bad. You think there's a dichotomy between you and the evil forces in the world, but you are the evil forces in the world. And that's all I could say on the issue. I think I'm explaining it the best I can. It goes back to my concept of you, we are the eagle. When I've told you don't poison the earth, when I've told you that we are here to minister to the animals of the earth, minister to the earth, minister to the air, minister to the water, we're not supposed to pollute them, we're not supposed to destroy them, we're not supposed to exploit them, we're not supposed to hurt them. What are we? We are the shepherds of the earth that we were given by God. We're only visiting this planet. We have to take care of it. That's the same exact thing. We have to watch our evil impulses, and that's true whether it be uh, with the earth or with our own nature. I was also thinking about dogs and, 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 and cats and pets and how beautifully we treat these animals here in America and how, unfortunately, people who come from the third world, especially from backwards Islamic nations, think that animals are dirty and that they should be mistreated. And they have to understand how to treat animals because in their own country they treat animals worse than dogs. When you say he treats her like a dog, what are you, what are you saying? Or she treats him like a dog, what are you actually saying? You're not really talking about America because most people treat their animals very well. Okay, maybe we exalt our animals a little bit too much. But there's a certain, uh, I'm looking for the right word, there is a certain sanctity in treating an animal very well. Because at the end of the day, we're smarter than them, we're stronger than them. And we have their, their life and their death in our hands. And I suppose that shows that we are better people for treating our animals so well, even spoiling them. Okay? It's as simple as that. 
And so here we are. It's very hard to be rational in, in an irrational time. And, uh, you know, I don't want to tie it to my new book, God, Faith, and Reason, but i got to tell you it is tied to it. I've almost given up on politics. I don't think there's any way to make sense out of the political world. Look, what is politics but men? And what are men but flawed and corruptible? The only thing that's not corruptible is God himself. I mean, that's amongst the faithful. That's what we believe. God is permanent, and God is immutable, and God is, is something that can't be uh, corrupted. And that is why millions of people have, and millions of people will, actually it's billions of people have, and billions of people will continue to have faith in God, irrespective of what the crazies might want you to believe. Billions of people currently believe in God. Billions, not hundreds of millions, not thousands in Nebraska, billions of people. There's over, there are over one billion Christians. There are approximately one billion Muslims. A very small number of Jewish people on the planet all believe in God, except those who teach at certain colleges. They believe in uh, civil rights. And, of course, to them, civil rights means bringing down Trump. So I wrote God, Faith, and Reason, which is not out yet. And I, I, one line that you've got to remember is the search to find God is the finding itself. And it's written by a flawed man, me, Michael Savage. I am not a prophet, need I say that to you? I am not a holy man, need I say, need I say that to you? I am not a religious re revivalist, need I say that to you? I am a man who has struggled with the concept of whether God exists or not from the time I, could, I was a child. God, faith, and reason begins with a boy in the streets of uh, the Bronx. Longfellow Avenue, sometime in the 1940s. A kid sees a newspaper blowing down the street in the wind. The newspaper is not in the English language. It is in the language of his father's. He thinks it is a holy book. He thinks the pages are from a holy book. The kid runs after the pages of the newspaper, gathering them up as best he can, one after the other in the, in the wind. And he grabs the crumpled newsprint and, and holds them in a bundle and comes running back and shows them to the neighbors and to his mother. And he says, Mother, look what I have found and look what I have saved. And they laugh at the kid, and they say, it's only a newspaper, son. That's the opening scene to God, faith, and reason. And so what can I say? Faith is what it is. Reason is what it is. Insanity is what it is. Irrationality is what it is. And here we are trying to stop the madman, while half the nation is trying to stop the president who wants to stop the madman. The media, 99% insane people, medicated insane people, spending their time not on uniting the people, not bringing us together to fight the true evils of the world, but dividing the people to sell products. So I have to turn to my audience. If I'm a little somber today, you'll have to accept me. I'm a moody guy. Today is not a happy day. It's a very, very dangerous time in the human, in the human, to be a human being. It's a very dangerous time to be a very rational in a very irrational time. And I'm asking you, the listeners of this show, this small show heard around the world, for the last 22 years, by the way. It's so small that it's currently on 20, uh, 250 or so radio stations. And it's the number one radio streaming show in America. I don't know if you know that. You won't read it anywhere because I'm not a member of the cartel that controls, controls most of the uh, radio business. I'm an independent operator. I have no agent in the radio business who represents all the others on my side of the aisle, as some do. I represent myself, and I represent the truth. I am Michael Savage. And this small show continues to go along one way or the other. Many stumbling blocks, blocks have been put in its way. Many will be put in its way, but somehow it keeps going. So I have to believe that somebody up there does like me. It's that simple. I'll take Rocky Graziano's statement, and I will apply it in this case. And why am I doing that? To sell you the book, God, Faith, and Reason? Well, yes, I want you to buy it and give it to faithful people. I want you to give it to faithless people. I want you to give it to your stupid son who may be a member of a left-wing group who doesn't realize that not two generations ago he had a religious person in his background. All of these smirking morons with beards in Brooklyn, they're not two generations away from a religious ancestor, which means within them there is the DNA of belief and faith. Be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com.
There are many, many steps in the road. Many, many steps. If you've read Steppenwolf, you'll know what I'm talking about. We're all Steppenwolves, and we're all stepping from one plane to another, some up, some down. And each day we go through our Steppenwolf phases, going up and going down. There's no straight up, there's no straight down. And one other note I want to mention, I don't know how we even got here today. I didn't plan on it. I didn't expect to talk about a book that won't be out for a long while. But I'm here because this is what I'm doing. I'm living it, I'm breathing it, I'm dreaming it. Uh, God, faith, and reason. I just have a feeling about this thing. It's going to hit a, uh, it's going to strike a universal note across many, many planes and many, many types of people. And mainly the secular. I do not believe the religious will buy this book. I'm positive that the, the devout Christians will not touch the book because it's not solely about Jesus. I'm sure the Orthodox Jews won't buy the book because they don't buy secular books. I have a feeling that there are many, many millions of people who are no longer faithful, who come from a background of faith, whether it be two generations ago or even in their own parents' lives, who will feel that spark again by seeing the odyssey of one man and his constant search in and out and out and in, uh, as was written, the garbage pail of faith. I mean, you know, that's the way it is. I'm not one of these people who's always in one place or the other. And that way I'm a Steppenwolf. Savage.